Welcome to all. In this video, we will see about ovary culture. Culture of unfertilized ovaries to obtain haploid plants from the egg cell or other haploid cells of the embryo sac is called ovary culture. The process of in vitro development of haploids from immature ovary is termed as gynogenesis. The term gynogenesis and its mechanism was first reported in Barley by the scientist Sandnoem in 1976. Generally in ovary culture, 0.2 to 6% of the cultured ovaries show gynogenesis and 1 to 8 plantlets originates from each ovary. Now we will see the factors affecting gynogenesis. Variation in species will affect the gynogenesis. For example, in rice, the Japanica genotypes are more responsive than Indica genotypes. Second one is stage of the ovary development. Optimum stage is the nearly mature embryo sac. And third one is organs. The whole flowers, ovary and ovules attached to plas and are responded better. In contrast, gerbera and sunflower isolated ovules show better responses. Next factor is cold pretreatment. Up to 48 hours pretreated at 4 degrees Celsius of sunflower seeds respond better. Similarly, rice cold treated at 7 degrees Celsius for 24 hours responded better. Growth regulators in sunflower growth regulator free medium is the best one. MCPA or 2-methyl 4-chlorophenoxyacetic acid induces somatic cali and somatic embryos. But in rice, 0.125 to 0.5 mg MCPA is optimum for gynogenesis. And high sucrose content up to 12% leads to gynogenic embryo production. And presence of light favors for gynogenesis process. In general, rice have two stages of gynogenesis. First one is induction stage. Here, ovaries are floated on a liquid medium having low oxygen and kept in dark. Second phase is regeneration phase. Here, the explants in, in the induction medium of tra are transferred onto a agar medium with higher oxygen concentration and incubated in light conditions. Now, some of the developmental stages of gynogenesis are discussed here. The haploid plants originate from egg cell in most of the species. The process is called in vitro parthenogenesis. In rice, mostly haploid arise from the synergic cells. In allium tuberosum, antipodals produce haploid plants and this process is called in vitro apogamy. Gynogenesis may occur either via embryogenesis or through gallus. In rice, MCPA produce MCPA produce protocom like structure from which shoots and roots are regenerated. Similarly, another oxygen piclorum promotes embryo regeneration from the ovary. In sugar beet, haploids developed through embryo. In sunflower, embryos regenerate following the callus phase. In general, regeneration from callus phase appears at least for the present to be easier than direct embryogenesis. Now we will see some of the key advantages of ovary culture. The uh, ovary culture is an ideal substitute for the production of homozygous lines. That means haploids and double to haploids in case anther culture and through anther culture we cannot get it. For example, in the CMS lines, micropores, microspores will not be produced. So we depend on ovary culture to produce haploids. And reduction in the frequency of albino can be achieved by ovary culture in case we face more albino through anther cultures. Now, some of the limitations of the ovary culture are discussed here. The ovary culture successful medium and growth condition is optimized for few plants only. Less than two dozen species have been optimized so far. Second is the frequency of responding ovaries is less than 5%. And the number of plantlets per ovary is only 1 to 2, it is very low. And anther culture is highly preferred over the ovary culture. Only in those cases where anther culture fails, then only ovary culture will be considered as an alternative option. Thank you.